Hello, my name is Frank Jan Steinberg and I'm working in the AT department of our BL coating editors. I'm responsible for the pigment concentrates usually, uh, but today I would like to tell you more about wetting and dispersing additives. So, um, not really how they work, but we will look at the product itself, so our highlight products. Our brands for pigment grinding are at first the Tigo Disperse, Wetting and Dispersing additives that are for solvent-borne, water-borne and solvent-free coatings. Then we have the Cita Spurs products, Wetting and Dispersing additives for water-based coatings mainly. The CarboVet GA surfactants are grind aids that help the efficiency of the milling process. Then the surfinal additives are surfactants that help the pigment wetting. They are highly dynamic and can be used in the pigment grinding and for pigment wetting. The lipotene wetting and dispersing additives are soilacetins for architectural coatings mainly. The colorol wetting and dispersing additive is for solvent bone coatings, for industrial coatings also based on soil acetin. And in the end, our Tego Vari Plus products are grinding resins that are used in mainly solvent bone pigment concentrates. Pigment grinding is the most important step in paint production. And uh, we talk about three different things usually. That is the color strength, that is related to the pigment wetting. So perfect pigment wetting gives very good color strength. Then we need during the grinding a smooth process that is related also to pigment wetting and intermediate stabilization. And in the end the pigment particles have to be stabilized. And this stabilization helps against flocculation and gives good viscosity reduction and also a very long shelf life of the paint. When we look at the dispersion production, so the grinding of the pigment, we have mainly three different steps. You see four here, but this has a different reason. So it starts with the dynamic wetting of the pigment. So we have to get the air out of the pigment powder to get the shear force to the pigment particles. That is the dynamic wetting. Um, you cannot use every wetting agent because a lot of wetting agents create foam and also the um, surface tension reduction is not very good in the, this dynamic process from all wetting and dispersing, from all wetting agents. So we talk about dynamic wetting. Then we have in this process, we can use the grind aids that also help the pigment wetting and make sure that the process is running smoothly. Then we talk also about intermediate stabilization. This intermediate stabilization helps the grinding itself and can reduce the grinding time. The intermediate stabilization is given also from the grind aids and also from co dispersants. After the grinding, when we have very small pigment particles, we have to stabilize them. And that is now the long-term stabilization that comes from polymeric wetting and dispersing additives. So they make sure that the dispersion is stable over time. So when we look at the effects, then dynamic wetting gives the color strength. So when we want to improve color strength, we have to look at the wetting of the pigment particles. The grind aids help the color strength development and make sure that the process is efficient. The intermediate stabilization help the viscosity reduction already and they make sure also that the milling is efficient and we, you can reduce the grinding type there. So that is the part where um, you have to look at when the customer wants to have 
lower um, shorter grinding time in the end the long-term stabilization that is the stability um, and also there we have to make sure that it is compatible so the polymeric wetting agent have to be compatible um, and that is the step where you start to discuss with the customers so that was the little theory in the beginning because um, our recommendations that you will see later um, are also divided into pigment wetting, grind aid, intermediate stabilization and long-term stabilization. Uh, so now we start with architectural coatings. Uh, so we have recommendations for the different market segments. Um, because in different market segments we have different demands. In architectural coatings, for instance, we have to look at very good compatibility, very broad compatibility, and also um, we have to look at the labeling. So uh, the products have to be label free, for instance, um, to meet the demands of architectural coatings uh, now in this time, because how the customers have issues with uh, labeling and so on. Uh, so architectural coatings, we start with waterborne architectural coatings. And there the highlights are for the color strings, the Sofinal AD01 that gives very good dynamic pigment wetting. Then we have as a grind aid CarboVet GA200, which is label free, low in VOC and also eco label compliant. As co-dispersant, we have the Cetasperse 179, which gives very good wetting, so it helps the pigment wetting and gives also intermediate stabilization. As a polymeric dispersant for stabilizing the pigment particles, we have the Tigo Disperse 747W in this field, so in waterborne architectural coatings. This time we do not divide into direct grinds and pigment concentrates because these products go into direct grinds and pigment concentrates the same. Just to mention some highlights or to give you some more information. Um, we start here with the Cetasperse 179, which is a very good co-dispersant. Um, it gives steric stabilization, so it is a non-ionic surfactant. It improves the dispersion stability, gives pigment wetting, is of course free of APEs and solvent, um, is VUC, uh, is compliant with VUC regulations in Europe and in the US, has no added sil silicones or silicas, and yeah, can be used in a direct grind of architectural coatings and in pigment concentrates. Here we have an example what the CETA Spurs 179 can do. It can improve the color strengths and can reduce the delta E in the rub out. Here you can see an example with PO73 and just the polymeric dispersant itself. And um, on the right hand side, you see the um, polymeric dispersant combined with Cetasperse 179, much higher color strengths, much better rub out value. As polymeric dispersant in architectural paints and pigment concentrates for architectural coatings, we have the Tigo Disperse 747W, which is an anionic dispersant that gives very good viscosity reduction with iron oxides, or especially inorganic pigments. Uh, so it was developed for iron oxides. It can also stabilize organic pigments, but um, the main focus is on inorganic pigments. It gives very good stabilization of inorganic pigments um, for a very long shelf life. And what is very interesting about the 747 is you can use it in pigment concentrates. 
with very high pigment loading and you can use it also in the direct grind of dispersion paints. When you use it in the direct grind, you get very good compatibility and very good color acceptance that you can see here when you compare it with a normal polyacrylate salt. The 747W gives much higher color strength. Yeah? So the color acceptance is much better. When you use it in colorants, so in pigment concentrates, it shows very good viscosity reduction so that the customer can increase the pigment loading. So you might face um, a customer that says, oh, the pigment loading in pigment concentrates for the, the deco paints is quite low because in a dispenser on point of sale, you use very low pigment loading. But it doesn't matter. When the 747 gives a very good viscosity reduction, you can increase, he can increase the pigment loading, can grind much more pigment in one go, and after that he can dilute the colorant to the demanded pigment loading for the dispenser. Uh, so he can save a lot of grinding time, which makes the grinding more efficient and also his factory more efficient. The nice thing about 747, I mentioned already, is that you can use it in the direct grind for architectural coatings and in pigment concentrates. Up to now, you have to use two different dispersions in the paint production. So it is usually in polyacrylate salt. And then it depends where you are. In Europe, we use polyphosphates. In the US, APEs. Um, some other regions use a lot of fatty acid derivatives together with the polyacrylate salt. So the polyacrylate salt stabilizes the pigment particles and the other, the co-dispersants have to wet the pigment particles. Then you have to use for different iron oxides, different dispersants. Uh, because iron oxide red behaves different than iron oxide yellow. If you do not use the a premium dispersant uh, that can also stabilize both but usually in the architectural coatings you use more the basic dispersants so that is the case at the moment when you look at 747 you can use it for all iron oxides uh, so for iron oxide yellow and for iron oxide red and you can also use it in the direct grind of the dispersion paint. That means it can stabilize the pigment particle, so the titanium dioxide and fillers, but it gives also a very good wetting and color acceptance. So there is no need for a combination anymore. So you can use only 7 for 7 in a direct grind of the emulsion paint and you can use it for all colorants. So in our ideal world you only have to use one additive and that is the Tegu Disperse 747W. A specialty in architectural paints are the universal colorants. Universal colorants we find in a point of sale for architectural paints. That means the customer can go to the point of sale, can take whatever he likes, waterborne paint for facade coatings, for instance, or solvent bond alkyd for as a trim paint. And then he can use the same colorant for this. So universal colorants in architectural coatings are defined as colorants that are waterborne, but they can be used to tint waterborne paints and solvent bond alkyds. Uh, so a very special technology. In the past, APEs were used for universal colorants. And in our Teco Disperse range, we have APE replacements that can be used for universal colorants. Here you can see the products for universal pigment concentrates or for universal colorants. To improve the color strengths, we have the Tegu Disperse 650 and the Tegu Disperse 652. Both are non-ionic dispersants that improve the color strengths 
and also help the compatibility. As a grind aid, you can use the CarboWet GA211. So when the customer has an issue with the process, you can recommend CarboWet GA211. As main dispersants, we have the Tego Disperse 653 and the Tego Disperse 656. Both are anionic and can stabilize inorganic pigments and organic pigments. So these are the main dispersants. So that means you can take the Tego Disperse 653 as a main dispersant for a colorant and then if you have to improve the color strengths of I mean, maybe an organic pigments, pigment, you combine the 653 with Tego Disperse 650. The 650 for organic pigments because it is non-ionic, 100% active, is a it is a very strong emulsifier, so it gives very good, very strong pigment wetting. The only little drawback, or what you have to keep in mind, is that the Tego Disperse 650 has an H412, so it is not free of labeling. So for an eco label compliant colorant, you can only use two percent of the Tego Disperse 650 in the colorant formulation. Tegu Disperse 653, the main dispersant, um, the, really the highlight in this field, is 35% active in water. Uh, so universal colorants are water-based. It is an anionic dispersant for, at first, inorganic pigments, so for the iron oxides that you use in universal colorants, but it can also stabilize organic pigments. Uh, so sometimes it needs a little bit help from 650, but usually you can use the 653 alone. It gives very good stabilization, very high color strength, very good viscosity production because of the highly anionic character. The outstanding point from this technology that we have for universal colorants is that you can use the universal colorants based on 653 656 and 650, also for facade coatings. So usually the universal colorants have a very high influence on water resistance. Uh, so when you have an APE in mind, it gives very low water resistance. Not the Tego Disperse 653, which can be used also for facade coatings. Here you can see the results that we have in uh, that we found in a silicon resin paint. Uh, so usually silicon resin paints for facade coatings with very low water uptake. That is on the left side. That is not tinted silicon resin paint. And you can see that the water uptake over uh, the different waterings is going down to lower than 0.1. That is the limit for a silicon resin paint. When you tint the silicon resin paint now with a colorant based on Tego Disperse 653, it, is, it still can be called a silicon resin paint in Germany. Uh, so because the W24 value is down to lower than 0.1. Uh, so the 653 can be used also for facade coatings. The same with 656 and 650. And that is the outstanding point from this technology. You can develop Universal colorants also for facade coatings with this technology. So that were the highlight surfactants and dispersants for architectural coatings. When you need um, guiding formulations for pigment concentrates, you can go on our website, of course, you will find it under service, or um, you can contact us directly. If you like. And also, if you have any questions about um, the process of pigment grinding, uh, just contact us. We try to answer all your questions. Thank you for your attention.